Some of these Big 12 teams, from a recruiting standpoint, need to punch above their weight to compete. And one particular school is doing that well. This is Locked On Big 12. You are Locked On Big 12, your daily podcast on the Big 12 Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to Locked On Big 12. I'm Drake Toll from ESPN Central Texas, joined by Brian Smith at FB Scout underscore Florida on Twitter, the Locked On recruiting guru. Thanks for making Locked On Big 12 your first listen every single day. And thanks to LinkedIn Talent Solutions for having Brian on today. A billion, a billion folks use LinkedIn and you can find the right hire for your small business today. Brian, without delay here. There is at least one team in the Big 12 that's punching above its weight when it comes to recruiting in the class of 2024. And uh, look, FB Scout underscore Florida. It's that state right there. Tell me, is that team located in Florida? That would be correct. It would be in Orlando, actually. Uh, UCF, they found a lot of the kids in Georgia that had SEC offers and got them come down to Florida. They got a lot of the kids in Tampa, Orlando area. This is why you have a chance there. I covered UCF a couple of years ago, and Gus is really going ho about that program and its long-term potential. And it's not real hard to recruit there. It's in a great city and all that stuff. And they're finally spending the money on facilities to make it a great program. This is the building blocks to get there. My assessment of a of a team like Kansas State, who has had success in the Big 12, right? They they don't recruit that well out of the high school ranks, and they don't recruit that well out of the portal ranks. They take three stars and turn them into conference championship caliber players. It feels like where UCF is, they can't do that. This can't be a two, three-star program. They need those four stars because of the pipeline they have around them. Is that a fair shake for Gus Malzahn and company? Absolutely. Orlando is loaded every single year with talent in the 25 and 26 classes are even better. Mm -hmm. So you can't let all your competitors come into your city and get everybody. Now, you're not going to get all of them. It's still Florida, Florida State, Miami, et cetera, all recruiting there. Notre Dame, Michigan, Ohio State come down, et cetera. But I mean, they're getting some of the kids that other schools want. Jalen Hayward was once committed to Georgia. He ended up signing with UCF. Bredell Richardson had offers from Oregon and LSU and Michigan, Notre Dame. He signed with UCF. Walt Walt Claire Flynn is one of the best offensive linemen out of Georgia. He signed with UCF. So they mostly kind of at home, but they, they went into Georgia and stole some kids, too, that SEC schools wanted. If you're going to eventually take yourself to that next step, that's how you do it. You, you got to get raw talent. There is no shortcut. And I know, oh, the portal, the portal. There's a reason a lot of the kids are in the portal. Not that UCF doesn't use it, but your base, and Kirby had talked about this after they destroyed Florida State, has to be high school recruiting. Mm. There's just no shortcut. That's why a lot of college coaches are also trying to get to the NFL, too. <laughs> Right. And, and there seems to be the best of the top five teams in the Big 12 last year are toward the bottom of the Big 12 in transfer portal rankings going into next season. Why? They don't need the portal. There is there is positive attrition there. Right. And the teams like Arizona State, who just outright sucked, they're the ones that are going heavy on the portal this offseason or Houston. UCF seems to have a good mix of the two. I just I, I wonder why, Brian, you have a good pulse on this. Why UCF over a, a Georgia? Why UCF over a Florida? What's the cause to join a Big 12 program or, or even individually Gus Malzahn's team? Part of it is the school itself. If you've been to the campus and the area around it, Oviedo is a little suburb right next to it. It's incredible. Yeah. Like it's a place people vacation Yeah, and the campus is pristine and all that. And the other is just the opportunity to be the guy. Like it's still in the elite conference level, but you're going to have a chance to play a little early. Like Georgia, you're going to have to really earn it to play early. Like that's that's a hole to get through that depth chart. I don't care which spot it is. So some of the kids in Georgia are leaving. Like UGA only signs half dozen or so players in their own state. They recruit nationally. A lot of teams go in there and pluck off players, so they get some of those kids too. And, of course, Gus coached at Auburn. They recruited Georgia heavily. So they know their territory. They, they put in the time. They don't care who they recruit against. And that's really the only way. It takes time. You're going to lose more battles than win. Yep. But if you put in the time, you're going to get some kids. And I went through the list and I know some of the kids. I'm like, this guy could play at Tennessee. This guy could play at Ole Miss, whatever. They're going to UCF. 
Yeah. Brian, we're going to talk that transfer portal in the middle segment of the show and some of the names to know in 2024 out of this class, at least. But I want to go down the list of the other teams here. Per 24-7, Colorado is 16th in the conference in the class of 2024. We've seen Deion Sanders' strategy to be attacking the portal. Is is what Colorado is doing sustainable here? Because they've neglected all high school coaches across the country. (laughs) <laughs> well, it, it's something that I don't have a barometer on because I've never even heard of this. Yeah. yeah. Let alone seen it. Here's the deal. It's one or two pass from off the record conversations, kids in Florida, et cetera. And Dion is originally from North Fort Myers. Mm-hmm. Kids either really like the idea of Colorado or don't. It's kind of one or two pass and it takes care of itself. I don't know how many parents are going to like the whole idea. Okay. I'm sending my kid off to the Denver area. That's fine but they're going to over-recruit him with more experienced players all the time. It's eventually going to get to the point it's really, really hard, even for Dion, who's charismatic. If you've met him, it, it, trust me, he's just as charismatic in person yeah. as he is on, on a microphone and TV, all that. At some point, you want your kid to play early. That's the concern. And he's, I mean, I've never seen anything like this. I'm a little skeptical, personally, yeah. and I'm guessing that you are as well. Yeah. But there's just not a lot of in-state talent in Colorado. And if there's one thing from a couple of conversations I've had with Dion in my life, he's not the most patient guy. He's not trying to recruit and redshirt and go that pattern. He's going to take a few elite high school kids and then the portal. That's yep. come hell, come high water. I don't know if that's sustainable or not, but it does help having Shador and a certain receiver slash cornerback he has named yeah. Travis. That, I, I I think it works at a Texas state. I think it might work at a South Alabama where you've got, the, it's going to fluctuate. Now the best player at South Alabama is trying to move up to the sec or move up to a power five listen. conference. So they can go pluck the worst of the sec or the transfers of the sec. Whereas at a Colorado, welcome to the power four. It, it's not going to be sustainable in my opinion, but instead you have teams like a Texas tech that are going more the high school recruiting route. Brian, let's go there. When I think Texas football, Texas high school football, having lived there the last five years, I don't think Lubbock like I, I you know like there there is Texas high school football and it's mostly Abilene East to me um, that's where the majority of your products get or you go down to Houston there's the hotbed there or the DFW or East Texas Texas Tech being number one in the Big 12 in 2024 out of Lubbock is even more impressive to me because they're in Lubbock which just isn't a recruiting hotbed. They got one of the best receivers in the country to go there. He's a kid. They recruit everybody won after. Uh, I'm not going to yeah. bore it. If you follow tech, you know who it is. I'm not going to get into it, but you get one or two kids like that. and can kind of elevate your program. What's interesting. Like even at the beginning of last year, they were something like 12 commitments right out of, they had more commitments than anybody. Like mm-hmm. they were the first one to 10, et cetera. The staff gets after it. Again, there's a very common theme. And again, Kirby Smart talks about it. So don't take my word for it. Take the guy that gets a top three class every single freaking year. It is about effort. It is about not spending time with your family. And there's a reason college coaches have a high divorce rate. It's recruiting. And it's about doing it anyway. That's what tech staff has to be doing because I'm going to go with what Kirby says. Uh, Call me a liar, but I'll, I'll take him. They're doing it, man. And that's a hard place to recruit to because somebody I knew somebody in Lubbock once. I said, how far is it to Dallas? They're like four and a half, five hours. And I'm like, holy cow, you guys are in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And they are. I mean, the kid, that's a that's a really long drive. So you can do the same drive from Houston to Dallas. I mean, it's crazy. I'm just curious how they're getting it done. I'd like to meet some of their staff, to be honest. Yeah. I hope they're good. The Big 12 needs somebody like they need a feel good story. Yeah. Maybe it's the Red Raiders. Uh, and I believe wholeheartedly uh, Clemson, right? If Dabo Sweeney leaves Clemson tomorrow and they suck at football the next five years, what does that brand look like? Florida State can survive that, right? Texas can survive that. Clemson's one of those that has built a program on winning. What if a Texas Tech builds a program on winning? What do they look like in a decade's time? Hopefully the Big 12 can build it. They need a brand like they that. Uh, and, and seeing where TCU is in recruiting makes sense. The DFW area, they're using that at number two per 24-7. The one I want to key in on before we go transfer portal BYU at fourth in the big 12 knowing their funky thing where they bring in guys who go on mission for two years and their recruiting always looks different are are you surprised to see them in the top 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 five in 2024 I don't know if I would go surprised because recruiting in general is about surprise I I find I'll have kids tell me where they're going and then three hours later announce for another school yeah so 
surprise I stay away from, but especially with NIL now and the portal and coaches moving around because the money for even assistance is big. Mm-hmm. The wavering through the waters is crazy. So I've all but looked at it like a fan anymore. Even if I have insider information, it's hard, man. It's really hard to pick. Yeah. Yeah. Well, BYU's right there. Surprising to me. I'll use the word surprise if you can't, Brian. I'll take it from you. It's uh, crazy. <laughs> it really let's, is. Let's go portal next, because I think the Big 12 is in a decent portal spot, seeing as how good yeah. teams are attacking it, bad teams are. And I like that formula right here on Locked On Big 12, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is where I go when I think, ah, man, rent is coming up, and I really like the Kansas City Chiefs to win the Super Bowl. And they did, and that helped me because rent is coming up. Uh, Or in college basketball, the NBA March Madness is coming up as well, and FanDuel is always running spectacular promos. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's the thing. Rent was coming up. I didn't have to spend my own money. I had $150 in bonus bets from FanDuel. And if your team wins, you get that. Quick bets, live game, same game parlays, exclusive props, and more, all from the NBA to the NCAA as well. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to shoot your shot. Fanduel.com forward slash locked on. Look, elevate the way you watch a game with FanDuel, the official sports book partner of the NBA. All right, Brian, transfer portal in the Big 12 here. Uh, Colorado being at number one is a shock to no one. That's what they want to do. That's how they're going to do it. They have built the most talented roster in the Big 12 based on how you evaluate recruits. Though, is it sustainable? We don't know. And uh, let's even go there to start. Them being number one, not shocking. How will we know? When can we tell if this is actually going to work? As many have rumored that once Dion's kids are out of Boulder, he is too. Well, that's the question I have as well, Um, because I I don't know who else is going to offer him a job, but that changes every day with these coaching positions. But they have so many different parts moving in that are looking for their shot to get the NFL and God bless them for it. But I mean, they got like Quincy Wiggins from LSU. He's one of the most freakish kids I've ever scouted. Mm -hmm. They got kids coming in from Houston. They got kids coming in from the SEC all over the country. How does that blend? They need to hit something because I don't know what like FanDuel has them as an over under number this next it's year. Four. I think it's four. It's I mean, it, and that's in the Big 12. What would it be if they were in the Southeastern Conference or the Big 10? Yeah. The, and that's with Travis still there and Shador there. I, I, you know, they need to prove something if they want to get out of this portal cycle. And if Dion wants to stay or leave, regardless, that's going to help. They got to find a way to get to a bowl game this year. Come hell, come high water. Does this work? I'm pretty skeptical about it, but I mean, they got some guys that were like four and five star recruits out of high school to come in and a few kids from smaller levels that put up numbers like FAU and stuff like that. They did their due diligence. Can you make it work? I got to see it, man. I'm curious what you think about it. You follow them closer than me, but they're intriguing. I'll give them that. Yeah, yeah, they've got they've got a loaded schedule, a lot of road games coming up. Uh, their non-conference with Nebraska is not going to help. Even North Dakota State could give them a run oh, yeah. money at I mean, this point. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Right, right. So I, I'm worried about the schedule that Colorado has and whether or not it's sustainable to not really recruit the high school ranks. Again, I think they brought in seven recruits out of 2024. So uh, I'm not going to put any of my money on it at FanDuel right now. The over four. Uh-huh. <laughs> Gee, I wonder based why. On, <laughs> right, based on the money I lost this last year. I can't trust it yet, but... Um, looking at the, the teams outside of the top 10 in the portal class this year, it includes West Virginia, Oklahoma State, Kansas, Kansas State, BYU, and Iowa State. All those teams have a lot of return production, and those teams were on the top half of the Big 12. Brian, the best teams that are recruiting the portal in the Big 12 this offseason, Colorado, TCU, Arizona State, Houston, UCF, they underachieved. Does that show some sort of cohesive strength in a conference when your best teams are at the bottom of the portal list and your worst teams or middle of the pack teams are at the top? I think there's a lot of correlation there. Look, we need immediate help. We didn't get it done. And let's not kid ourselves. This is the what have you done for me in the last 12 seconds generation. Mm -hmm. These coaches want to extend their contracts as long as possible. How do we do that? Well, if we get more experienced players, it's more likely we can win right away. And away we go. 
I actually interviewed a trainer earlier today about a, a recruit in South Carolina that's a top quarterback, but he doesn't have as quite as many offers as he probably would have, say, five, six years ago because of the portal. It's just true. We were talking about it kind of laughing, like there's nothing we can do about this. Yeah. Well, quarterback and O-line in particular, longer development spots, you see teams just trying to get anybody they can that's played in college. They, they want the experienced guy, experienced guy. I, I don't think that's going to change much. And then you have like Oklahoma State who has like 20 starters back. It's insane. Yeah. For this next year's team, they, they should win the Big 12, I would assume. That, that'd be my pick, but – they don't need as many guys. Those kids, I mean, even if they tried, they got all these starters. It's going to be pretty hard to get guys to transfer in. So, yeah, if you're if you're at the bottom, like Arizona State, you mentioned they were terrible last year. Definitely. They got to do it. I have no problem with that. It's the Colorado thing where it's just every year that it makes me a little weary. At some point, you got to get balance. UCF is pretty happy medium with that. 15 or so high school and or transfer guys each year. That's sustainable. I don't think the 20 plus transfers is a great idea. Yeah. With with that and, and kind of the point you made about bringing in experience. If I'm a high school recruit, why don't I go to Western Kentucky and start for two years and then transfer up to an Oklahoma state or in in the best case scenario for me, a Georgia what is bringing high school recruits in the age of the portal to these power four schools, knowing that they're going to be redshirted immediately or have to sit for two years? The kids that are the truly elite kids, and I mean top 50 to top 100, have zero fear. Sometimes yeah. for the wrong reasons. They, they're not as good as they think, but whatever. It's those kids that aren't top 100. I've had those conversations with people and there's starting to be a little shift. Some of the seven on seven coaches, some of the trainers, even some of the high school coaches, when they go on these bus tours, yeah, they'll go to Georgia, they'll go to Bama, they'll go to Kentucky or Notre Dame or whatever, but they'll stop at Savannah State. They'll stop at some school. You're like, where's that at? Austin P or what? Because they want to have relationships with everybody. And these coaches move all around. If your kid goes somewhere and doesn't make it to Georgia, you can go down too. It goes both directions. Yeah. You want landing spots. And you're 10 years ago, there wouldn't have been near as much as that. But the portal, there is. And some of the kids are open-minded to it. I think there's going to be at least a little bit of a shift, but the ego gets in the way. The kids all think they can play at Georgia, which they can't. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's just a way of human nature. Uh, Brian, the name Micah Hudson has been brought up once already. Let's bring it up even more. Who are three names to know in 2024? He's got to lead it. That's coming up next on Locked On Big 12, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is where I go when I need tickets. Coming soon to me is Parker McCollum in Savannah, Georgia. And so if I want to go see Parker McCollum in Savannah, Georgia, I go to Game Time and I get tickets to see Parker McCollum in Savannah, Georgia at the cheapest, best rates. And I can see where I'm going to sit. There are last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals. I don't buy tickets until the day of the event because I know I can go to Game Time and get them cheaper. Download the Game Time app for a great ticket buying experience. They're easy to find. Views from all seats in the venue. Lowest price guaranteed take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time right, right now all game time users if you use code locked on get twenty dollars off your first purchase you're going to an mlb game a spring training game and it's only a 15 dollars ticket well if you get twenty dollars off your first purchase that ticket is free it's kind of how that works at game time download the app use code locked on for twenty dollars off your per, your first purchase download game time today last minute tickets they are the lowest prices and that is guaranteed All right, Brian, guys to watch out for high school kids out of 2024. Got to start with five star Micah Hudson out of the Waco area here going to Texas Tech. I mean, is there anybody else who can sniff his jockstrap in this class? Well, I mean, he's a big time player, but he's not the only one. I I love Hudson. Don't get me wrong. That was an easy one. I was actually going to dodge him just because he's such a good football player. But no. Breedell Richardson is my guy. I've known him since he was a freshman. He went to Carrollwood Day in Tampa, going to UCF. He'll play early. Very, very talented receiver. 50-50 ball guy. I also really like Jamarian Burnett going to Houston. He's from southeastern Alabama at Andalusia. 6-1-2-20. I mean, that's some really nice pickup for Houston. This is a kid that can come in and play right away. I saw him play live. There are mothers that were in the stands that were very disappointed he was running over their sons. Uh, uh, big man. And I would not want to be that guy. Uh, last one, and I, and I know him as well, Walt Claire Flynn, also going to UCF. 300 pounds, moves guys against their will, SEC-level players. He will also play early at UCF. 
So the Micah Hudson conversation, I know you say what you wanted to dodge it, but we'll give Tech their roses here because that's I mean he's one of the best recruits in, oh, in big in Big oh, Twelve man. history, not just Texas Tech and Big oh, Twelve. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Like a kid like this, is he the type? Is he the monster that steps on the field day one and is the best player on the team, despite there being some fifth year guys hanging out in Lubbock? It's possible. The only de- derailer for any high school kid is the same. How much of the playbook do you digest almost immediately? High school playbook, college playbook. It's just totally different. So his catch radius, his ability to stop and start, and he's a really good route runner for a young guy. You're not going to teach that. Now can he adjust to the physicality? Can he block and learn the playbook? All those things have to come into play. The receivers all have to block now for each other in the screen game, although I'm sure they'd rather get Hudson the ball. Elite player, though. I watched about three or four of his clips a year and a half or so ago and turned off the film. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't, you just really, I mean, I'm just, okay, how good is a player? Sometimes you got to watch more. With Micah, I watched less, which is actually a good sign. He had offers from every school in the country before his junior year was over. So I'd imagine he'll be at least one of their top five players by the end of the year. Again, playbook is key. If he does that, they're, I mean, they're going to throw it around. So can Mikey go in there and make it happen? I hope so, because he's one of the rarest of the rare. He still had everybody coming after him, from what I was told, mm-hmm. all the way through the process and stuck with tech. How many guys do you think would do that, Drake? How many guys? It's it's teeny tiny. Like the Georgia, when Georgia, USC, Michigan call, it's pretty easy to accept that phone call. He went the other direction, man. It's a cool story. Really yeah. is. Oh, we've seen plenty. I mean, even in covering Locked On Baylor a year ago, they had three guys who split up to LSU, Texas A and M, and Oregon. It's like, ah, what do you do? You know, you can't. How do you compete with that? And for Hudson to be at Texas Tech is a huge win for Joey McGuire and company. But you, you mentioned a few more names. I mean, is outside of him, is there a guy, the guy that you say, hey, a year from now we're all going to look around and say this is a freshman that made noise at the national level? It's possible. I hate picking freshmen, but I mean, it, it could be Burnett. He's 220. Like yeah. when you walk up and shake his hand, he's 6'1", 220. You're like, you're in high school? Yeah. And the way he was built, um, it looks like he's in his fourth year of the NFL. So I don't know how he ended up at Houston. Uh, he was originally yeah. committed to Auburn, but hey, good for the Cougs. That's a strike one for the band, man. That uh, That's good. Uh, Bredell is a kid I know is going to play. I've seen him forever. He was a kid that Cam Newton personally would fly up for practices for seven on seven. That's good, yeah. right? That's pretty good. But yeah, that's a sign. That's a sign. Yeah. But uh, there, there's so few kids that I want to project, even top 10 kids. It's hard, man. It's hard, that adjustment from high school to college. But Bredell would be the one I would pick the most because I know him and his maturity is very, very high. I here's where I struggle, Brian, with with the whole deal in talking about high school kids, how many and I think it's still too early to to tell the number, but how many of these guys that we've mentioned, these names we brought up will still be playing for Houston, UCF, Texas Tech, TCU, whoever in two years, much less four years. Is it so much harder to tell the trajectory of an elite high school player because of the era of NIL and portal? Because these conversations might be moot when in three years time, none of these guys are still playing for the school they've committed to. The only way some of that changes, and this is not a big 12 problem. This is everybody. Cause they're like, yeah. even Georgia has kids poached. Mm-hmm. The nose guard bear Alexander went from Georgia to USC. So, I mean, think about this. And I know this goes against their recent history. Unless the NCAA drops the hammer, which goes against everything they stand for because that takes money out of their own pocket, and the TV networks who really run college football, let's not get ourselves. Yep. Why in the hell wouldn't you cheat? I mean, let's not. I'm just going to go out and say it. The number of schools not cheating is very low. Mm. Do not throw arrows at your rival because there's a really good chance the school you root for and or went to. He's doing the same thing. So I don't know if you can stop it. And it's just super random. Like I'll talk to a kid at a practice, at a press conference, all gung ho at the end of spring ball or whatever. And then two days later, they're in the portal like that. You can tell they had it lined up and they were just lying. There's no way they could have had all that. Like the first day of the portal, they're done. Really? So, you know, there's backdoor shenanigans going on. They're getting offered money. So. Can you stop it? I don't think so. The only way it happens is if schools lose cash. But if they lose cash, the NCAA usually does, too. And they don't like that. So, nah, I don't see a a reason it's going to change, Greg. 
That's why we get an elite 25 minutes from you about recruiting. And then like, will any of this conversation, yeah, I know. That's the tough part is, will any of this matter in two years? It's you know, important. it's an important question. I'm glad you asked it because it's real. That's reality yeah. for the big 12. Especially. Like this league is teeter tottering. Yeah. Like it could be a big, th- it could be a power three. I, I just had to adjust to power four is my terminology recently. It doesn't sound right. Power three sounds terrible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it does. But think about this: the state of Texas not being the center mm. of a major conference. That would be the case if that's because Texas and Texas A and M now in the SEC. I mean, at one point, the Southwestern Conference was all Texas schools and Arkansas. That was the only school yeah. outside the conference. Yeah. It's just bizarre what I grew up with compared to what we see now. Like I loved Southwestern Conference football; it was great. Yeah. I've got the Southwestern Conference banner back here because I think yeah, it's I know. It's, it was it was fantastic. They had top fifteen teams littered, kind of like the SEC does now. They'd have three or four teams in the top fifteen: SMU, Texas, Arkansas, etc. They'd all be ranked. It's man, it's changed a lot. Those days know, are right? gone. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And it's you mentioned it the way the ACC is going and the way that Florida State is kind of spearheading the oh. debacle that that is. There is an opportunity for if if the Big Twelve ponies up and poaches or at least gets it has its business in a row to avoid the fate of the ACC and Pac twelve. There's a door there to be relevant. I think just the word relevant is where the Big Twelve needs to start before we even talk Power Three because it's a Power Two right now. It's a Power Two right now, and it's that's, that's reality. And it's not close. And it's not close. Um, so hopefully, things stay on the positive for the Big Twelve. That's a big hope, uh, Brian. If folks want to find more of your recruiting stuff, where can they go? Where is the best way to find you constantly doing this kind of work? At FB Scout underscore Florida on X, uh, formerly Twitter. Everything seems to change nowadays. But uh, I, I write for Auburn Daily and All Hurricanes. I help out a bunch of different sites on Locked On. It's a lot of fun, man. It is recruiting time for me. I'm actually busier right now because spring means seven on seven. Under Armour. I got my Under Armour shirt on because I'm getting ready to go to Under Armour Atlanta. Seeing prospects. So videos, photos, interviews, you name it. It's all there. Love it. There it is. We'll have Brian on here soon again. Thank you, Brian, for joining Locked On Big 12. For those that are listening, thanks for making it your first listen every single day. Come back Monday. We'll break down Saturday's basketball and more from the portal to the to the second portal thing that's about to come up here in a couple of months and spring ball as well. This is Locked On. Thanks again for making it your first listen every single day. Dose Grande.